chapter 2 the gospel according to mark by the end of this chapter you should be able to come out with the following one be able to state what a gospel is as a unique form of literature and what it aims to do two describe mark as a gospel writer including the probable time and circumstances of his writing along with the special purpose he had in writing three outline mark's distinctive teaching about who jesus is and what jesus came to do four apply mark's distinctive teaching about the good news to your life today in a specific or specific ways mark opens by saying the beginning of the gospel about jesus christ the son of god mark chapter 1 verse 1 and it implies two important things that one this is the way the good news began to happen about jesus christ the son of god or this is how the good news began which we are living out and announcing today secondly it may mean that this is the beginning of the account which i'm writing of how the good news about jesus started note that the word gospel in greek means evangelion literally meaning good news gospel means events of the first century AD, which consist of good news announced of then and for us now, as an account of those events. This makes the gospel a special form of literature, which some scholars today call an ancient biography that tells us the unique events concerning or connected to Jesus of Nazareth. Gospel also challenges us to respond like any good news. When you receive good news, you respond, you react. So it challenges us to respond, to act upon the good news that those events comprise of by introducing all the four gospel accounts, that is Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John. We have a question to ask ourselves which might have been forming in your head. Why should we start with Mark when in the New Testament arrangement gospel appears in a more familiar order of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John? Why do we need to start with the Mark instead of Matthew? There are good reasons for starting with Mark. One, scholars today agree that Mark wrote his gospel first between 55 and 65 AD. Two, Matthew and Luke used it when compiling their own accounts later between 60 and 65 and 60 AD respectively. Three, among the three gospels, John is not shared between did not share Matthew and Luke's reliance on Mark, and neither did he use the accounts unique to Matthew and Luke or use any of their traditional sources. So scholars think that John wrote independently of all and somewhat later than Mark between 85 and 90. It is therefore sensible to begin with Mark, the shortest and indeed earliest and dramatic of the four Gospels. We look at Mark's version of the good news and ask ourselves what unique contribution he makes to our knowledge of Jesus and try to apply what we learn from him to our lives today. This gives us first look at Mark's gospel in outline and the outline helps us 
to know what we want from where we begin with the introduction followed by Jesus demonstrating his authority followed by Jesus in conflict with others then Jesus teaches his followers followed by Jesus journey to Jerusalem and the cross followed by the last three chapters Jesus dies and raises from the dead what is a gospel we have already said this one uh, in chapter 1 gospels have characteristics and you say Mark is not a biographer by the way for he does not concern himself with Jesus childhood immediate family or a environment Mark brings us right to Jesus adult life presenting his call at baptism which we find in verses 9 to 15 of chapter 1 what is interesting is that Mark is interested in the good news about Jesus Christ other than any other thing else that's why he begins straight to the point that the people wanted to hear and here Mark portrays Jesus as John no, portrays John the Baptist as the forerunner of Jesus Christ in verse 2 to 9. Jesus is proclaimed Son of God, verse 10 to 11, making him different from the former messengers who had come. Also, Mark presents Jesus beginning his ministry by introducing the idea of the kingdom of God and the need for repentance. Now as to be a member, a citizen of this kingdom introduces, you have to qualify through repentance. Verse 15. Mark's purpose in writing his gospel is to present Jesus Christ, Son of God, who came to institute the reign of God here on earth. The gospel in this case is not a biography, but a proclamation. A proclamation is a public statement. According to Mark, Jesus is inseparable from his mission because the mission of salvation is seen in his presence. You see Jesus, you see salvation. You see the mission, you are seeing Jesus. The good news began when Jesus burst on the scene. Bring the good news that God is inaugurating his kingdom and his direct intervention in the world history. People have been waiting for their salvation, a kind of salvation that might be different from what the gospel present, because they are expecting a kingdom, a physical kingdom which they had lost into the hands of the Babylonians, the Persians, the Greeks like that. So they are expecting good news that a king has come to liberate them now from the reign of the Romans. The gospel compels us to respond. Good news. When you receive good news, you respond. The gospel confronts us and gives us options to choose. You can accept the good news or you can reject it. But you cannot remain neutral. You can now, you forget about what is here, but you can now think back. When you received good news about you are successful completion of senior six with good pass marks and uh, somebody brings you news that you have passed with good you know points ready to be admitted in a university of your choice i don't think that you just looked on like that you must have jumped around jubilated and even shared with those who had never even known that you were at school even those who do not take academic excellence important, but because you are excited of receiving good news. So we come to look at Jesus' message and ministry. Jesus began by preaching the good news and calling the disciples. And 
the disciples he called were fishermen. As we read in chapter 1, verse 11, 27, sometimes you may wonder why fishermen? Why fishermen? But it is very clear fishermen were seasoned people at the sea. They had tactics of catching fish, but although also they were men who were uh, willing to suffer weather or climate change. And here the climate change would not be a physical climate change, but it could be a spiritual climatic change. And then he says that he has called them to use the tactics of catching fish to catch men. His ministry was characterized by passion for the suffering, suffering spiritually and physically, even socially, politically, and otherwise. And here he draws large crowds and they started following him. In so doing, he decided to choose the 12 disciples whom he would teach and train to do ministry work during his time and after. And his teaching was characterized by parables, teaching in stories, story form, parables drawn from everyday you know, life to relate them into the spiritual understanding of his message. When you read Mark chapter 6 verse 30 to 44, we find there one of the things that Jesus did as a miracle, feeding of the five thousand, which reminds us of the Old Testament days when God miraculously fed his people by giving them quails and manna when they were demanding food from Moses. But also we remember he sent ravens to feed Elijah at the brook where he, when he was running away from uh, Ahab. Also we read the story of the widow of Zarephath whose, whose oil jar was kept full under uh, the basket after feeding Elijah out of nowhere and Jesus did the same miracles in the church today Jesus feeds his people through two things his word a word spoken feeds many and the Eucharist small as it may be it feeds the people spiritually so the feeding of the 5,000 teaches us that Jesus is concerned with both our spiritual and physical needs. After he had preached to them the good news, he discovered that they were hungry. So he gave them what to eat to nourish their physical bodies to be able to go back home. So even for us, it is a lesson that Jesus does not concern himself with our spiritual uprightness, but also our physical needs. We are told that after they had eaten, 12 baskets were collected. And this is in parallel with the 12 tribes of Israel and the 12 apostles. You know, among the Jews, there are those which we call divine numbers like 3, 7, 12, and so on, which inwardly may mean that God will always be there ready to attend in full and surplus to the needs of the people of Israel. Stories in the gospel are not simply stories with interesting things that happened, but are full of deeper meaning from physical to spiritual. So in everything Jesus displayed who he was. All the stories in the gospel have a theological meaning. They go beyond the physical to the spiritual.